It was the summer of 2012 in Damascus, and for the people of Syria, it certainly seemed like all the predictions about the end of the world were coming true. The Syrian civil war was raging between multiple rebel groups, and the dictator Bashar al-Assad, whose government was shelling its own people, as well as using chemical weapons and brutal campaigns of violence across the country in hopes of quelling the rebellion. Little did they know, amidst all this pain and bloodshed, something even more dangerous was brewing. An anomalous phenomenon in the sunny plains north of Damascus that may pose a threat to all of humanity someday. A threat known to the SCP Foundation as SCP-3989, the Bone Orchard. This temporal and spatial anomaly was discovered a few years earlier in 2009, before the Syrian civil war even officially began. It's strange for a highly dangerous Keter-class anomaly to be discovered under such seemingly mundane circumstances. The SCP Foundation first became aware of SCP-3989 after a small olive orchard owner sold a strangely high amount of olives that shouldn't have been possible when compared to his reported number of Olea Europea olive trees. Field agents were dispatched to question the owner about his sudden success, but he was resistant to questioning. The agents began a covert surveillance operation to figure out what was actually going on here, at which point they discovered a considerable spatial anomaly. The olive orchard was far bigger on the inside. The property was seized by the Foundation for Containment. The owner had no real knowledge of the spatial anomaly. It's likely he just decided not to look a gift horse in the mouth while making money hand over fist from the extra olives he sold. The owner was given amnestics and a new life, as the Foundation began to study this anomaly, which was now labeled SCP-3989. To this day, no researcher has been able to figure out the origin of 3989's anomalous qualities. It was first given a Euclid-class designation and cordoned off from the public with a simple chain-link fence while Foundation investigations were underway on the inside. On a map, the plot of land the Olive Farm should occupy is about five square acres, but this plot contains an unseen portal to a pocket dimension within its 12-meter active zone, which doesn't follow the same spatial laws that our reality does. This subdimension, known as SCP-3989-A, is a hotbed of fascinating anomalous activity. Upon discovery of this hot zone, the Foundation established the nearby Area 126 as a research center and a makeshift containment facility for any anomalous entities captured from SCP-3989-A. It seemed like the Foundation really had a handle on this situation, but they were blissfully unaware of the true horrors lurking within SCP-3989-A. But they'd soon find out in the most horrifying way possible. Dr. Farah Kazeli was assigned to head the research into the anomalous zone within 3989, and naturally, he began organizing fact-finding expeditions into the heart of the affected area. The first guinea pig to head into the hot zone was former Foundation agent Hosea Herrick, who'd been demoted to the lowly D-class position of D-126-15 due to failures on a previous mission. With a remote link to Dr. Gazelli, Herrick was forced to venture into the active anomalous zone to collect footage and samples of the flora and fauna within. The first thing Herrick noticed on his expedition was the strange quality of the olive trees within the active zone. The bark was a stark white, and the leaves a bloody red. Up close, Herrick could see that the trunks and branches of the trees had undergone a process known as ossification, where the material slowly becomes bone or bone-like tissue. Hence the anomaly's creepy name, the Bone Orchard. These ossified trees became known as SCP-3989-1. Herrick also made another discovery. All over the trees and ground were worm-like creatures that looked like long maggots that the Foundation dubbed SCP-3989-1A. Agent Herrick then noticed something was off about the leaves of the ossified trees. They were beating. He looked closer and they appeared to be heart tissue filled with pumping veins. Dr. Gazelli ordered Herrick to take a branch for testing, and when he did, the tree began to bleed. When he looked down, he saw that the worm-like creatures that covered the ground were now crawling up his legs. Ignoring orders from Dr. Gazelli, Herrick fled from the active zone in terror. As he left, Dr. Gazelli caught something in the corner of Herrick's body cam footage, a long, white hind limb disappearing behind a tree. Back in our normal dimension, 
tests on the sample hair it collected yielded more upsetting discoveries. Genetically, the trees were identical to humans, the trunks were human bone, and the leaves really were made of human heart tissue. Fascinated and just a little bit horrified, Dr. Gazelli authorized further expeditions into 3989-A. This time, though, Agent Herrick would be accompanied by another D-Class, and both would be armed with handguns and protective body armor. As it would turn out, this expedition would be even more horrifying than the first. As the two D-Classes explored the active zones to collect further samples, they found that the worms were responsible for the ossification of the otherwise non-anomalous olive trees. They consumed the wood little by little and deposited human bone matter in return. Herrick and his companion also noticed that these trees were beginning to bear fruit. Dr. Gazelli ordered Herrick to collect some of this fruit for testing, but when they attempted to remove the fruit, it burst, releasing more worm creatures. It seemed that the converted trees acted as incubators for their egg sacs. Before the duo could return with the samples they were able to take, the creature that had been spotted on Herrick's body cam during the first mission finally appeared. It was huge, with long white limbs, and no facial features except for a huge mouth. It grabbed Herrick's companion and literally ate the top half of his body in a single bite before dropping his legs to the ground. This horrifying beast, and the many others like it, would later be designated as SCP-3989-2A. Herrick pulled out his sidearm and shot the creature several times. The creature ignored the bullets, though, and charged Herrick. The feed from his body cam cut out soon after. Both men were declared killed in action, and in recognition of his sacrifice, Josiah Herrick was posthumously reinstated to his old position in the Foundation. Job well done, Agent. Dr. Gazelli, meanwhile, prepared for the next mission. This time knowing of the clear dangers present within the Bone Orchard, Dr. Gazelli recruited the help of MTF Zeta-9, aka the Mole Rats. Three members, referred to as Charlie Team, were sent into the anomalous zone, once again remotely directed by Dr. Gazelli. They were equipped with experimental ultrasound technology, so they could scan the fruit of the trees within 3989-A without breaking any and incurring the wrath of 3989-2A, which seemed to act as sentries for the trees. Early on in their journey, they found the body of Agent Herrick crucified against one of the ossified trees, his skin covered in mysterious symbols that were likely of Sarkic origin. While we don't have time to fully explore Sarkicism, that will require a video explanation all of its own, all you need to know is that it's a dangerous religious cult that worships flesh and disease and has close ties to similar dangerous anomalies, like SCP-610, also known as the flesh that hates. People familiar with that SCP will note eerily strange similarities to some of the things the mole rats were about to encounter. As Charlie team explored, they saw a huge number of 3989-2As observing them with eyeless faces from between the ossified trees. They pressed on, until they discovered what seemed to be an entirely new kind of tree within the bone orchard. SCP-3989-2 were huge trees made out of what appears to be enlarged human spines in place of a trunk. The smaller twigs on the tree were made from heart and lung tissue, and the whole thing was covered in what appeared to be human amniotic sacs. Charlie team attempted to use their ultrasound scanners to discover the contents of these sacs, but one of them exploded in the process, releasing an entirely new variety of monster. From the sacks emerged the larval stage of SCP-3989-2B, smaller humanoid monsters with no faces, no sensory organs, two pelvises, four legs, and an exposed spine. Suddenly, Charlie team could feel a horrifying sarcic presence around them, which one member of the team described as being like someone grabbing her liver and giggling in her face. As the various monsters of the Bone Orchard began to converge on the team, the voice of the Sarkic Prophet of War and the Hunt, Oruk, began sounding in their ears. He was beckoning them to join him. While Charlie team fled from the active zone, Dr. Gazelli felt increasingly drawn into it. He heard the voice of Oruk, and he liked what he heard. Little by little, the workers of Area 126 were losing their minds manipulated by the sarcic power of the Bone Orchard right next to them. 
day after day. They were no longer loyal to the Foundation. They wanted to serve their new Dark Masters. The fourth and final expedition was led by Dr. Gazelli himself. He took a band of loyal followers and one non-believer on a quest into the active zone to find an Orkian temple they believed was hidden in the very heart of the Bone Orchard. Once they were inside, Gazelli and his loyalists murdered the non-believer as a sacrifice to their new master. They carried on until they eventually found what they were looking for, a giant stone temple resembling an Aztec ziggurat, dubbed SCP-3989-4. There they also encountered a new kind of monster, dubbed SCP-3989-3. These beasts were larger than the others and resembled ancient warriors. They had insect-like exoskeletal armor, horned heads, additional hind and forelimbs, and integrated bladed weapons. What Dr. Gazelli and his companions thought would be paradise turned out to be a kind of hell as they were led into the temple, where temporal and spatial distortions broke their mind, and the multiple highly aggressive instances of SCP-3989-3, Dash 2A and Dash 2B broke their bodies. The whole thing had been a horrifying trap. In that moment, back at Area 126, another fleshy, horrifying tree sprouted out of the ground in the middle of the complex. Monsters that had once been Dr. Gazelli and his followers emerged from its amniotic sacs, and all hell broke loose throughout the complex. Soon enough, the base was crawling with monsters from the Bone Orchard and staff who'd become brainwashed Sarkic cultists working in service of Oruk. Humans were gathered up to be sacrificed to the ever-growing number of anomalous trees. Things came to a head when the anomaly in Area 126 was visited by an outside agent from the Foundation working on behalf of the Hazardous Materials Containment Liaison. Biological containment specialist Dr. Marshall Grant and his team arrived at the site and were horrified to see the Sarkic nightmare that had unfolded. They quickly engaged in a firefight with the anomalous creatures and Sarkic devotees who'd gained control over Area 126. A number of Dr. Grant's team were lost in the process, but thankfully, they were able to eventually regain control of the base and the anomalous area. After this incident, SCP-3989 was upgraded to Keter class and given a huge upgrade in security, including four meter high concrete walls and a platoon sized regimen of mobile task force members with heavy weaponry. The force that took over the minds of those exposed was designated SCP-3989-5, a force so powerful that those infected are given the choice to self-terminate or be contained forever. This may seem like a somewhat happy ending to a grim tale, but one detail keeps Dr. Grant and everyone at the Foundation who is forced to deal with 3989 awake at night. According to all recent studies into the Bone Orchard, it isn't contained at all. In fact, the active zone is getting bigger. Now go check out SCP-4000 Taboo and SCP-5545 Abnormality for more strange nightmare locations from the SCP Foundation.